The Johannesburg Stock Exchange, Africa's largest stock exchange, surged to a new record on Wednesday, breaking the 86,000 points mark for the first time before closing slightly lower at 85,960, a 1.4% increase. The boost was driven by all sectors trading positively, with the resource index leading the gains and the all share index climbing over 1.5%, reaching an intraday high of 86,197. The rally followed global market optimism spurred by China's central bank stimulus measures, including lowering bank reserve requirements and cutting interest rates to, stimulate, uh, to actually stimulate growth. Now, um, this boosted markets worldwide with the GSC surging after being closed for South Africa's Heritage Day holiday. So um, from Johannesburg, South Africa, Viv Govenda, a portfolio manager, joins me to talk about this. Uh, thank you so much, Viv, for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now, uh, what factors would you say contributed to the GSC breaking the 86,000 points mark for the first time? Well, I think a, a big factor you must consider is that uh, we are seeing uh, stimulus from China really helping us. I mean, we passed 87,000 at the moment, uh, as I speak to you. So it's a lot of it is coming through from the uh, uptick in, uh, you know, stocks related to China, so the NASPERS, uh, some of the resources, et cetera. Uh, NASPERS, for those that don't know, is a South African company, the biggest in exchange. And it, uh, about 20 years ago or so, still 20 years ago, it bought a stake in a company called Tencent in China, and it's gone up massively since that time, 4,000 times uh, the initial investment. Uh, counting for the majority of the company's valuation. And that is, uh, you know, obviously risen up as the Chinese uh, stocks have risen on the stimulus measures. So then how might uh, the continued interest rates cuts in China affect South Africa's businesses in the short term and in the long term? Short term, I think it'll be positive. Long term, I think China has some significant problems. Uh, you know, I point to the fact that, uh, you know, you can have anyone you want in charge of the U.S., uh, Trump, Biden, whatever, Generally, you'll have the Zuckerbergs, the Musks, and, you know, the general, uh, you know, uh, entrepreneurs of, of the U.S. operating almost unaffected. In China, you uh, criticize the country or the government, rather, and you turn it to be like someone like Jack Ma, who is forced to effectively retire from business. Um, with the leadership that we see in China right now, it's much more conservative, much less focused on the economic issues in the country than, uh, you know, previous administrations have been, given much less freedom to uh, entrepreneurs, etc., and I think that's really impacting growth prospects in the long term. So until we have a change in policy in China around those things, I think long term there still are going to be these issues. So the short term stimulus is going to be positive for markets, but longer term I think they need to solve some of these structural issues. Well, China might be having you know slight economic issues, but we see it you know having a bit of influence uh, in some sectors in South Africa. So I'd like to find out what role um, Chinese business or the government, uh, in terms of their play or their role in the performance of South Africa's mining and resource sectors, has been. It's been obviously very important. China is the number one uh, demand of resource in the world. Uh, you know, they, they actually uh, bat far above their. Uh, GDP size uh, in terms of uh, resource demand. And so it's not just South Africa, but a lot of African countries are net exporters of resources and therefore, uh, you know, are helped by China being, you know, stimulating that economy. Uh, but in South Africa, we're also affected, like I said, with NASPERS, but also companies like Richmond, which uh, has, uh, you know, a luxury goods, uh, the luxury goods maker. Uh, they basically uh, are listed here as well. And uh, they are affected by Chinese uh, demand for luxury goods. China is also incredibly important in the luxury goods market, and they are affecting the affecting the market uh, via that as well. So, yeah, I think it's uh, resources primarily, but it's just, just two quirks of history. Things like NASPERS and Richmond and Process uh, are also affected, uh, you know, by the Chinese uh, stimulus coming through. Mm. Uh, we know that um, South Africa is actually part of the BRICS and uh, in terms of markets and bilateral trade, it tilts uh, more towards China. But then we still saw President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa visit the New York Stock Exchange uh, a couple of um, days ago. And I'm wondering what importance that would mean and what influence uh, that would have on investor confidence for the country. Yeah, I think BRICS does something that is overstated in terms of its importance. For instance, one of the other players in BRICS is India. But China and India are on opposite sides of a number of issues. In fact, India is part of the Quad, which is uh, the US, uh, India, uh, Australia, and Japan, which are effectively a security alliance against China. Uh, so BRICS, though it sounds good, uh, doesn't really have this coherence of something like, for instance, NATO or some of the other kind of you know, global institutions out there. And so obviously, Sonoma uh, Posa has gone and wants to make uh, stronger relations with the US. In fact, he did meet Elon Musk, as many know, Elon Musk is actually a South African. Uh, or 
was born in South Africa. Uh, and we are seeing, you know, uh, ties up with, uh, you know, the Western powers as well, but not just with uh, China. Uh, and it must be noted, uh, you know, going forward, that the South African economy, if you have to look at it from the financial aspect, is probably more integrated into the Western sphere, uh, uh, the Western financial markets, than it is into the, uh, the Chinese system, even though, like we did mention, the Chinese do offer the primary market for our resources. Hmm. Okay, let's talk about Mescom a bit, the public utility firm. Now, it has actually experienced, you know, about six months of stability. And I'm wondering what the resurgence, um, in terms of its impact now, what it has been on um, South Africa's economy and um, investor uh, sentiment. Oh, obviously very positive. Uh, like you said, six months, no load shedding. I mean, it's a continuous power for most places, uh, you know, every day. Uh, and I think that's been a, a big change for the country because the load shedding was not just affecting, uh, you know, your convenience of living, but, you know, people want to go shopping because they didn't want to have to deal with the fact that, uh, you know, traffic lights were down. They didn't want to deal with the danger of not having street lights at night, uh, you know, in certain areas. Uh, it, it was an overall negative. And, of course, businesses had to compensate for the fact that we had uh, electricity prices lower, uh, electricity being as uncertain as it was by going out and like finding alternatives like you know, diesel generators and solar power and so on. And those obviously drags on the you know, performance. Uh, that being said, uh, the reason that they've done this is they've uh, basically, uh, you know, obviously trying to cut down corruption, but also uh, taken away focus on things like, you know, renewables, uh, green energy, which the previous, uh, you know, leadership at ESCOM had been focusing a lot more on. And by focusing on the traditional parts of ESCOM, like the coal generation and so on, uh, we've managed to basically recover uh, it remains to be seen uh, how long this continues, but right now it does look uh, quite positive that we are going to be, uh, if we do have load shedding coming back, it's not going to be anywhere near as bad as we experienced in 2023, which was quite a difficult period for South Africa. Okay. Uh, okay, back to the markets now. How do you now anticipate um, South Africa's commodity sector um, to perform, looking at um, the year 2024 to 2025? Because we see China's anticipated growth in the market, but we're looking at how pivotal that would be for the commodity sector. Look, I think China has some serious issues that are not going to be taken away by stimulus. Uh, but just look at the property sector, which accounts for a third of the commodity demand. Uh, that has been overbuilt. That uh, probably has to be, uh, you know, serious, uh, you know, pain has to be found in that sector. And even more than even the country has been found right now. And I think we need to see that uh, that part of the economy recover. Uh, and I think that's not going to happen in the next couple of years. Uh, we are seeing the Chinese economy, you know, obviously slowing down in terms of growth, still doing very well by like, comparing to some Western countries, but still not near what it was in the past. So I think China as a source of demand for commodities, is probably going to be uh, of diminishing importance going forward. And there's been a placement coming through. Unfortunately, there's very few places in the world that can replace China. India uh, is obviously going fast, but it doesn't have the same ability to grow infrastructure like China does, and therefore this could be negative, uh, or not, not as uh, strongly related to commodities as China's growth was. Uh, maybe we can see some development happening in Africa, but again, unlikely to happen in the next you know year or two. So I think uh, for the foreseeable future, the weakness in China is going to affect us, you know, negatively from terms of resources, uh, demand. And I think the weakness in China is unfortunately not going to be solved in the near term as well. Uh, so, so does the um, economy of China in a way affect um, the GSC Limited? Because we see that um, the price share has actually hit about a 52-week high. And um, I'm wondering if um, that could have a significant effect um, on the South African market. Oh, yeah, look, I mean, South Africa has gone through a bit of a, a renaissance in the last, I would say, few months as well. Uh, the round is stronger than it has been for quite some time, you know, from where it was just before the elections till now, maybe about 20% stronger. Oh, no, it was more than 10% stronger, not 20%, more than 10% stronger. Uh, we've seen uh, a recovery in what's called South African Inc. stocks, that means stocks related to the South African economy. Uh, loan trading plus this uh, new optimism about the government uh, has helped that as well. Uh, so, yeah, we are seeing uh, a bit of optimism returning to South Africa's uh, financial markets. Uh, in fact, uh, many days there, some of the most negative people in South Africa are now saying it's possible to look at the South African stock market as uh, a, a reasonable source of investment uh, opportunities, uh, which has been, uh, you know, uh, really lagging uh, global markets for the last few years. So it's not just China. It's also the election. It's also load sharing that's uh, possibly affecting uh, stocks in South Africa. Okay, uh, so now that um, we are seeing a broader trend towards um, economic recovery um, in South Africa, how sustainable do you think uh, this bullish run will be um, in the GSE? Uh, look, I mean, uh, South Africa has fallen so far behind in terms of like infrastructure, in terms of other things, that recovering 
probably is easier than people will think. I mean, it, it doesn't take a lot for a lot of positive uh, return in this market, just because you know the damage has been done by by underperforming at a massive level when it comes to things like electricity, when it comes to things like transport. We've talked about Esco all the time. We haven't talked about Transnet, which is the rail services, port services on combined that uh, allows us to export commodities because the rail services have been under huge pressure. Uh, ports have been uh, you know underperforming. If we get those things right, at least we can sell more stuff. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, opportunity for improvement here. Uh, the thing that uh, remains in question here is about how stable the government is. Uh, it's an alliance between the ANC and the DA, which are uh, polar opposites almost of the you know, political alliance uh, uh, and or political spectrum. And uh, there's a lot of issues. I mean, things with national health, things with, uh, uh, with regards to education, etc., that are in, in its contention. And so far, they managed to paper over it, these differences. But uh, I think that longer term, uh, it's quite vulnerable to some kind of disruption. We've already seen, for instance, uh, the ANC, which is coalition with the DA, like I said, nationally, act against the DA in uh, one of the more important uh, cities, Pretoria, to oust the DA uh, mayor. Uh, so th this coalition is, is more vulnerable than we think. And I think if that coalition does fail, we would likely see uh, more negativity return to the country, unfortunately. Yeah, and of course, um, now that the GSC has gone green, um, stakeholders and investments will be hoping that this will actually positively affect all the sectors while also improving the standards of the um, current market. Uh, Viv Govend, our portfolio manager, uh, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us on the show. I'm sorry.